All right, I mean, we got to talk about this. Pretty much everything's at a record high right now. We were talking about it earlier, utilities, financials, the S&P's getting there, the Dow's there. Um, in this situation right now, how do you play it as an investor? I know you're actually kind of worried about a possible pullback because it's hard for things to go much higher from here. Right. <laughs> well, the, the market got everything it wanted, right? It got an accommodative Fed. Uh, it got, you know, low inflation, low unemployment. So, but at the same time, we are here at a uh, two-year anniversary of the bull market. So a pullback is definitely on the cards, and we would be looking at that pullback in an opportunistic manner. Well, so when you say opportunistic, is it just, you know, that old, uh, it's kind of a trope now, just buy the dip? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Are you targeting certain sectors that you think if there's a pullback, it's just temporary and there's going to be a big upswing next year when earnings estimates are supposed to go up, when the economy could hypothetically strengthen? Yeah, so we, uh, we feel that right now there's a lot of concentration risk in the market, especially with the tech companies. We were talking about that earlier. The bar is set very high for them. Even if you look at Netflix, which reports today, you know, the stock's up more than 200% over the past two years. So we feel that a lot of investors are over-concentrated in the technology space. We would be looking at some of the other areas which are, which are going to do well because of uh, consumers. Because what the bank earnings have showed us is that the consumer is in good shape. All right. Let's talk about that concentration risk. I'm looking at the last three months. The MAG-7 is up just over 1%. The S&P equal weight, it's up over 6%. Haven't investors already started to spread out their bets? Isn't that why we're seeing these other sectors hit these record highs? Again, like utilities and financials. I mean, hasn't the concentration risk simply lessened a bit? So right now, if you look at the uh, S&P 500, you know, if, uh, it's about 40% in technology-related right. companies. So the average investor is still very heavily focused, concentrated in tech. But what we are starting to see is that this trend is changing. If you look at it from July 10th up until the close of the market on October 15th, the Nasdaq's actually negative. But if you look at some of the other sectors that we like, utilities, industrials, mm -hmm. dividend-paying companies, those are up more than double digits. So investors should broaden the scope of their portfolio. But, but they already have. I mean, isn't that why the equal weights far outperform in the, the MAG-7? Well, I think the average investor is pretty heavily concentrated okay. in tech. Uh, but we feel that right now is the time to start to spread that out a little bit. Because potentially, if there's a market correction, we saw what happened with ASML, right? The stock okay. got pummeled. So if you broaden your, uh, your exposure a little bit, you could reduce the concentration risk in the portfolio. How are you viewing retail sales coming up today, 8.30 a.m. Eastern time? How important is it to you as an investor? And, and how do you think the Fed's going to view it? I mean, it's not, a, it's not a labor report. It's not an inflation report. But certainly it's one of those reports that has a lot of importance. Yes, the, the, I think it's an important report. And, and the Fed is going to view it. The Fed is very data dependent. I think right now... The Fed realizes that when it comes to unemployment and infl inflation, we are in a sweet spot right now. And ideally, they want to freeze things the way they are. So this report is important. Fed is going to be data dependent, and they'll be adjusting their policy accordingly. But the important thing is that they are accommodative. All right. Uh, does a, a Fed cut coming up in November or December, does that matter to you as an investor with the uh, investments that you want to make or the sectors you want to put money to work in? Or is it just, again, that we're in a rate cutting cycle? Well, I think the, the, the cut matters because, you know, that means that the economy is getting stimulated. And I think we are at a point right now where we can rule out an economic Armageddon, you know. Uh, so we, we, are, we feel very constructive on businesses that are catering to the high-end consumer because those businesses are not going to, those consumers are not going to scale back their consumption based on small economic blips. We're kind of in a full circle moment. We're go, going back to the banks. The banks told us consumers are doing great. Borrowing's great. Um, consumers seem to feel pretty confident about spending and about the economy overall. I'm going to get to those stocks that you're talking about. These are both pretty interesting. Both of them are, are trading pretty close to 52-week highs. One's American Express, the other one's Home Depot. And you're saying these are companies that cater to those higher-end consumers. Yes, absolutely. So the higher-end consumer is, is, is where you want to be right now uh, because, you know, if, if the economy is continuing to uh, go along, I think these consumers will do well. American Express caters to that demographic. Because of that, they're able to charge a high annual fee, and they're also able to charge a higher uh, merchant fee as well. So that uh, stock does well. Home Depot we like because we feel that some of the housing-related companies will start to do well because of rate cuts, more home constructions, more renovation projects, and Home Depot also pays a great dividend. So that's another reason why we like that company.